Jones fracture, fracture of the proximal fifth metatarsal bone. Sir Robert Jones, a British surgeon, sustained an acute fracture at the base of the fifth metatarsal bone while dancing, and the fracture was then named after him. Jones fracture occurs at the metaphyseal diaphyseal junction and it extends into the intermetatarsal joint distal to the metatarsal cuboid joint. Here you can see the joints that are connected to the base of the fifth metatarsal bone. One joint articulates with the cuboid bone and it is called metatarsal cuboid joint. And the other joint articulates with the fourth metatarsal and it is called the intermetatarsal joint. For Jones fracture to be called Jones fracture, the fracture must enter the intermetatarsal joint. The fracture got to be distal to the metatarsal cuboid joint and must enter the intermetatarsal joint. Jones fracture occurs about 1 to 1.5 cm distal to the tuberosity of the fifth metatarsal bone. If we talk about the anatomy of the fifth metatarsal bone, the metatarsal bone is divided into a head, a neck, a shaft, and a tuberosity. Jones fracture of the proximal fifth metatarsal bone occurs in the watershed area within one and a half centimeter of the tuberosity. The area where the Jones fracture occurs is an area of limited blood supply. There are multiple metaphyseal arteries at the tuberosity. There is a nutrient artery with intramedullary branches. It provides retrograde blood flow to the proximal fifth metatarsal bone. Fracture distal to the tuberosity will disrupt the nutrient artery blood supply, resulting in a relative avascularity of bone. The peroneus tertius tendon is inserted into the dorsal metaphysis of the fifth metatarsal bone. The peroneus brevis tendon is inserted into the tuberosity of the fifth metatarsal bone. You can see that the plantar fascia, especially the lateral band, is connected to the fifth metatarsal bone. When Jones fracture occurs, the tendons will pull the fracture apart and prevent healing. Fracture of the proximal fifth metatarsal bone could be mistaken for a sprain because the sprains are common on this side of the foot. There are three types of fractures at the proximal fifth metatarsal bone. Fracture in zone 1, which is tuberosity avulsion fracture. Fracture in zone 2, which is the true Jones fracture. And fractures in zone 3, and that is usually a stress fracture. So if we take fracture in zone 1, which is an avulsion fracture, it is called pseudo-Jones fracture, the preneus previs insertion site and you treat that fracture conservatively. If you take fracture in zone 2, that's the true Jones fracture. There are usually acute fractures that occur at the metaphyseal diaphyseal junction and involves the fourth and fifth metatarsal articulation. Zone 3 stress fractures are chronic fractures that occurs distal to the fourth and fifth metatarsal articulation and may be associated with cavoverous foot deformities. In children, it is important not to make the wrong diagnosis of a fracture of the proximal fifth metatarsal base while looking at a normal growth plate. 
Here is the normal apophysis. The growth plate is usually present between the age of 9 to 14, and it is parallel and lateral to the metatarsal. Radiology. X-rays will show the fracture and its location. Acute Jones fracture will have sharp margins with no intramedullary sclerosis. You can see a Jones fracture here in zone 2. A stress fracture will have a wide fracture line with medullary sclerosis. Treatment of Jones fracture. If the fracture is non-displaced, you're going to use a boot or a cast. Non-weight bearing for 6 to 8 weeks, 75% will heal. In athletes, or if the fracture is displaced, you're going to do a screw fixation of the fracture, and that is very popular technique. On the lateral view, the canal appears to be straight and narrow. In the AP view, the fifth metatarsal appears to be curved, and that's called lateral bow. Lateral bow of the fifth metatarsal bone may cause complication during surgery. There is vulnerability at the mid shaft for perforation of the medial cortex. The canal is narrower in the dorsal plantar dimension, which is narrow in the lateral view. The point of entry for the wire or the screw is not centered. The entry is not at the center of the bone. The fifth metatarsal cuboid joint blocks the proximal canal projection, and this situation can cause complications. Each patient metatarsal should be evaluated individually for proper screw selection, surgery, and screw placement. Drill parallel with the shaft in the lateral plane and avoid plantar direction. Avoid the shoren nerve. You probably need to use 4.5 mm cancellous screw the appropriate length of the screw that should be used is usually around 40 to 50 mm. The diameter of the screw depends on the width of the canal. With a smaller screw, the fixation will be unstable. The larger screw may displace the fracture. The screw threads must cross the fracture site. Failure of the procedure of a screw fixation is attributed to poor blood supply or return of the athlete to activity before complete radiographic healing. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.